Okay, multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic and progressive demyelination of the neurons in the CNS. Now, hopefully you've had a chance to watch our neuroanatomy video. But what happens is, here is our neurons are covered by this myelin sheath, right? And what can happen, and we'll show a couple pictures of this uh, in just a minute. What, ha what happens is this myelin sheath begins to degradate and the neuron becomes completely exposed. Okay, so this, it, it, it's, you'll notice it with remission and exacerbation. So <clears throat> basically the patient will have episodes of feeling okay, well, that would be the remission episode, and then they'll have uh, episodes where they're in an exacerbation phase. So that's one thing to keep in mind with uh, MS is remission and exacerbation. That'll be really important to help you identify MS in patients as well as on test questions. It's most often going to occur in patients who are between 20 to 40 years old. The cause is completely unknown, and like I said, it'd be important to watch the neuroanatomy video. Okay, so it's chronic progressive demyelination of the neurons, and it goes through remission and exacerbation phases. Okay, so here's a <clears throat> here's a neuron here with a healthy myelination. And this would be what would happen with damaged myelin, okay? This is what would happen with MS, is where the myelin becomes damaged and it starts to expose the neuron, okay? So what I want you to think about is basically think sensory loss, okay? So with most of these diseases that we've talked about throughout this course and everything, there's usually one thing we can focus on that will kind of help us be able to identify everything that we're talking about. With MS, you need to think sensory loss, okay? So neurons, what they do uh, is they help provide sensory information, right? And the myelin sheath helps to support the travel of those senses, okay? So what happens as that myelin sheath is lost is we begin to lose sensory um, abilities, okay? So you'll, you'll notice your, your patient will have fatigue, they'll have tremors. They can have spasticity of muscles because they're not able to transmit those um, impulses as well. They'll have bowel and bladder dysfunction, decreased peripheral sensation, visual disturbances, and emotional instability. Again, we're thinking just think sensory loss, okay? That's what we have to really think about here. So they'll have decreased sensations to pain, temperature, touch, spasticity, fatigue, these tremors. Okay, they're not able to kind of control the movement of sensations, okay? So we have to understand that there is no cure. This is purely supportive therapy. We, we currently don't have any way to really cure this. And so we just try to make the patient as comfortable and support them as much as we can. Biggest thing, again, is going to be energy conservation, okay? Our patient's going to be have very decreased ability to... Um, support themselves, so we need to provide um, sensory or energy conservation for the patient. We need to maintain adequate fluid intake of about 2,000 mils a day. What can happen, and, and this I, I obtained from the, the VA website, um, is a lot of patients with MS is they'll start decreasing their fluid intake because they lose bladder, um, so they start having bladder incontinence. So they'll start decreasing their fluid intake. Now the problem with this is that these patients are also um, can become constipated, okay? They have altered bowel function. And so it's important to maintain adequate fluid intake to maintain proper bowel function. Um, and so they shouldn't really be decreasing their intake. So we really need to kind of monitor, make sure the patient's getting adequate fluid every day. So we can provide bowel and bladder training, um, setting specific times when they need to go to the bathroom. We need to encourage activity independence. Now this can be really hard for both. It can be very hard for the patient to kind of lose their independence. Um, as the disease progresses. So it's important for us to find ways that they can be independent and to help them. One thing that you are going to absolutely have to know on your test with this, well, first of all, you need to know the remission um, and exacerbation. Um, and that's very important with MS. You need to know it's a degradation of the myelin sheath. But you also need to know that you need to regulate temperatures on water heaters, baths, and heating pads. So within uh, homes, you can actually regulate the temperature uh, of your water heater. And you need to go in there and, and, and make sure that someone goes and sets those temperatures because the patient's going to lose the ability to feel that temperature difference. So it's important to make sure that's set appropriately. 
We also need to ensure the safety of the home. This becomes more and more important as patients get older, but especially with patients who have MS um, with the sensory deficits, that we need to make sure cords and rugs are all pulled up, that, that, there is, that we remove as many of the safety hazards as we can with these patients. Okay, so that's really kind of how we're going to manage this. And like I said, I really want you just to think um, sensory loss, okay? As they lose their myelin sheath, their senses are going to become greatly affected. And so we really just need to think about that and think about how we can keep the patient safe and how we can help the patient be able to care for themselves as much as possible. All right, if you guys have